Welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. On this DaVinci Resolve tutorial, I'm going to be showing you the basics of keyframes. Now keyframing is something that is very powerful that allows you to add different attributes at certain points in your clips. And keyframes are something that is available throughout DaVinci Resolve, whether you're on the edit page, fusion, color, or Fairlight. But in this tutorial, we're primarily just focus on the edit page. And so whenever you bring down your clip to your timeline, if you go up here to the top right and you choose inspector, you see additional properties here. And so as you can see here, these are all the video properties and also additional attributes for certain properties. And we also have audio as well. And the way in which you add a keyframe is to simply look to the right. And if you see a diamond shaped symbol, as you see here, that means you could add a keyframe and some of these properties, if you double click it, there's more attributes below it. So right here, for lens correction and cropping, there are additional attributes you could set. And so that's how you could actually get to your keyframes for both video and audio. Now, before we add our keyframes, let me show you how these attributes work if you don't use keyframes. So say, for example, I wanted to zoom in and also change the positions. So I could do that by simply taking my mouse over here and moving it to the right or the left. And I could do the same thing for this position X and Y. So that's what I want. Now, the thing is, if you do it this way, there are no keyframes set. So what that means is it's going to apply these attribute changes to your entire clip. Now, if that's something that you want, that'll work. However, that's not what we want here. We want it to move over or animate to this different position and different zoom. So the way in which you can reset that is a number of ways. You could either click on this, it'll reset it. You could double click on this and it'll reset all the values. Or if you had multiple attribute changes, like say I did this, this, and I zoomed in, and you don't want to have to go individually through all of them, you could click on this and it'll reset everything. Okay. So now let's go ahead and add our keyframes now that you understand how these attributes look like. So what I really want to do is I want to start off, like say right here. And then from this point, I want us to start zooming in or changing. Okay. That's really what I want. So now you can add your keyframes. So it's really easy to add. Just go to diamond and you can just click on it. Now we have our keyframe or you could add it per attribute if you'd like. So you could do it either way. So in this case, we have a keyframe for this one. I don't want to do anything. I just want to tell it like, Hey, this is where my keyframe starts. But over here, this is where I want it to change or to animate. So now I want to add a keyframe. And so here I want to add a zoom keyframe. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. And I also want to adjust the positions as well. So we'll go X and Y. And if you notice, if you already had a keyframe prior and if you start making adjustments, it'll automatically set this as a keyframe or you could click on it if you want as well. And so let's see how this looks like. We'll go back to the beginning. We'll play this. Let's go back here, play it again. And there it zoomed in. And another thing you probably notice is there's now arrows. So that means that you could go back and forth between the keyframes in your clip. So we're going to add some more keyframes. We're going to add another keyframe here. We're going to have a little bit more fun. Now, if for some reason you don't see this red keyframe on, you want to make sure that's on. Otherwise, it didn't add a keyframe. So that's on. It should be on once you start adjusting values. And then so I have a yaw there. We're going to have some cool effects right here. Then I'm going to add a rotation effect. So it might make you kind of dizzy, but we'll just mix it up a little bit like that. And then finally, when I get here, I want to reset things back to normal. So let's make sure we have these keyframes set. Okay. So here I'll add a, another keyframe. And in this case, I just want to reset things back to normal. So here I could just double click on this zoom and it'll go back to one. It'll go back to the original value basically. So I'm going to do this for each one of them. So now it's back to its original dimensions. And so we could go back here at the beginning. Let's watch this again. Now, depending on how fast your computer is, uh, it might take a while to do that, but there it is. Yeah, that's like pretty much Hollywood level. And if for some reason your clips or all these effects or this keyframes takes a while, it might be because you need to change your playback and put it in proxy mode. And I would say half resolution or quarter resolution. So that way it's not stuttering if you have a slower computer. So that's just a tip. So there you go. So now we've added our first 
a set of keyframes. And as you can see, it's fairly simple. But now let's go ahead and dig a little deeper. So now that you've added your keyframes, you'll notice something a little bit different on your clip. If you look down here on the bottom right, you now see two new symbols. One is a keyframe diamond symbol, which is very similar to what you have here. And the other one is a curvy thing, which is for ease curves. And so if you click on this, this diamond, the keyframes, it's actually going to show all your keyframes in your clip. So this makes things a lot easier than having to move back and forth and not really knowing where these keyframes are within your clip itself. And so whenever you click on these keyframes, you could actually adjust it. So right now, this is where they are at in your clips. So say, for example, you wanted to move this around. I wanted to, this to go a little shorter. And so if I move the keyframes closer together, then it's going to go a lot faster. And if I were to move these keyframes further apart, then it's going to go slower. So let's go ahead and move this over here. So now it's going to go slower. So this allows you two main things that you could do. One is to actually see where your keyframes are. And secondly, you could adjust where they're at and also the timing. So it's really easy for you to look at your keyframes just by choosing this. And so the second one is curves. So if you click on this, this is going to look really uh, complex, but it really has to do with how your actual animations uh, work just in general uh, with your keyframes. And so the default for each one of these keyframes is this linear curve. Okay. So if I were to just click on this, this is a linear curve. And if you actually look at the line, it's a really straight line. Okay. So what that means is uh, from one thing to another, there isn't like a smooth transition. And so just in general, uh, let me show you how these curves work and what they mean. So this one right here is linear, meaning whenever it changes animate from one thing to another, it's really a, at a constant rate. And it's also very straight and narrow. Okay. So that's why it's called linear. This one is easing in. So the very first keyframe is coming in. This one is keyframes in the middle. And this one is at the end. Okay. So let me show you how this looks like. So say, for example, I want to smooth out this keyframe here or say from here to here. So I could click on this and you might or might not be able to see this, but it actually added a curve. And then I could do the same thing here to this end one, just ease out instead of linear. So we make it a curve. And if we were to watch this, it's going to be smoother. And then if you go back here to the middle, we could add another one and it'll curve this portion in the middle. So let's go ahead and watch this. So those are how these curves works in general, but there's also some other things as well. And so if you were to go to each one of these keyframes and these curves, you see these bars, you can adjust it and not to get into too much complexity. Uh, but this allows you to create custom curves. And if you were to move it up, it would ramp things up quicker, move it down. It would slow things down more. And then you could also adjust like how smooth these are. So this is something that I will get into in another video because it can get complex and you can have a lot of crazy looking, uh, transitions or keyframes between the two, these animations, you see that. So that's a really sharp drop. So it went really quick. And then just basically the smoother the curve, the better. And if you notice now, if I move it up, it actually increases the value here. Okay. So that's something that you definitely want to look at. And that's for the zoom attribute. You can also uh, look at the curves on different attributes. So if you click on this, say, for example, I want to look at the position X and Y, I could choose that. Now we're on the position X and Y attributes. So we could do the same thing here right now. The default is linear. So we could set a different one here and we could adjust the bars as well. So we'll just go ahead and watch that. It'll probably look pretty horrible. <laughs> so that's a real general explanation of how these curves work. And so this is something that will allow you to really fine tune uh, the actual animations between the keyframes and this in and of itself could be a very complex thing. So this is just a very high level overview of how these curves work.
Now, these are the main ways in which keyframes work. And I'm going to show you some other things as well. So let's go ahead and click off of that. And so earlier in the video, whenever I wanted to adjust these attributes, I would simply go here, you know, move my mouse, slide it to the left and right to change values. And even though that works well, and you could also type in the values if you want, there's another way you could do this. And I think it's a lot more freeform way of doing it. And that's by simply using the transform overlay. If you go down here to the left, you click on this, you click on it. Now you have this weird stuff on top of your clip. And right now you might not be able to see everything. So what you need to do is go here to your view. Right now it's set to fit. Go to like 25%. And now it's zoomed out so you can see everything. So once you're out here, you can do a number of things. The first thing you can do is you could actually zoom in and out. And so if you notice, it changes the zoom value here. Another thing you can do is move things left and right. And you could also rotate things as well. There is a rotation right there. And you could also play around with it. You know, you could squeeze things in and out. So there's a lot of options there and it's a more freeform way of you doing that if you don't want to do it right here or you don't want to type in the values. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just go ahead and put that back to normal. And now we'll go ahead and change our view back to fit. And if you want to move the overlay, just go ahead and click on that. And so that's an easy way for you to adjust the attributes of your clip. The next thing we could do is add multiple properties. And so right now we've primarily been focused on transform and all its attributes, but there are other things we could do as well, such as composite, cropping, and also lens correction. So say for example, I wanted to do more than just transform. So if I go here to my view, here is transform and all the current keyframes that I have. So let's go ahead and add some cropping. So I would go ahead and go here, add one keyframe here, and then I'm going to add another key from here. This is where I'm actually going to do my crop. I'm going to crop to the left and crop to the right. So if we go back here, let's go ahead and watch this. And now we're going to have our crop. So now if you notice on our keyframe view, we have two different properties, one for transform with all its keyframes and then one for cropping with its keyframes. And similarly, you could adjust the curves on any one of these. And this could get really in depth and complex, but I'll just show you here that you could add multiple properties to your keyframes. So these are all the basics of keyframes in the edit page. As you could probably tell, there are a lot of things you could do and you could really get detailed when it comes to doing keyframes and animations. And so if you actually had any thoughts on this video or any other type of tutorials you want to see, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And if you did want to see more of my DaVinci Resolve tutorial tips and tricks, I do have a playlist. I'll leave that in the description as well if you're interested. So as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey geeks, if you are a creative geek like me and you wanted to learn how to create content on YouTube and other places on the internet, then check out my Go Content Creators Group where you get access to additional videos and content for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part of it is all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the other side.